Hello everyone. My name is Susan Petraccio. I am a children's librarian with the Buffalo and Erie County Public Library. I work at the Central Library in downtown Buffalo. I am here today as the picture book specialist um, of our collection to tell you about some books that have come across my desk that were published in 2020 and that sort of spoke to me and uh, hopefully will uh, be interesting and something you might want to use in your classroom or library. Um, a bit about me, I've been a librarian since about 2006. I first worked for the New York Public Library. Uh, I worked for about five years at the 96th Street uh, Library in uh, Manhattan, which is 96th Street is considered one of the first streets in East Harlem. I also worked at the Yorkville Library up at the Upper East Side. Uh, I moved to the Western New York area in about 2014 and I was a librarian at the Lancaster Public Library and I have been here at the Central Library for about two and a half years. Um, so I have tried to pick some books that maybe aren't bestsellers or haven't been you know mentioned in you know webinars or other publications just to give you a sort of broader sense of some of the picture books that are out there. I know it has been such a hard year for teachers and teacher librarians and students so I hope that you find this helpful and that maybe it'll be a, you find a great read aloud to, for your class or your library sessions or maybe you'll just find the right book for the right kid at the right time. So thanks for listening. So the first book I'd like to talk about today is called My Panda Sweater, written by Gilles Baum. It was actually originally published in French, so I looked it up and it would be Mon Poule Panda. So if you want to impress your students, you can say it both in French and in English. Uh, it is about a little child who is, as you see, wearing a panda sweater and the child wears it everywhere doesn't ever want to take it off until it shrinks and the child's mother suggests that they donate it and then a few days later a little girl walks into class wearing the panda sweater um, this is a great book for you know the shy kids the kids that need just a little help coming out of their shells that maybe could use a little bit of a confidence boost and about making friends and sort of you know finding common ground and, and something to um, kind of latch onto in developing friendships. So it's really sweet. The second book I wanted to mention is called Overground Railroad by Lisa Klein Ransom. It is about a family that is migrating from the South via train um, to New York City. Um, they are part of the Great Migration. And as they travel north, um, physical things switch, uh, change on the train. They, they go up into Maryland and the train becomes desegregated. They're allowed to mix more freely with people um, the further north they go. Um, the child in the book um, sort of ruminates on other um, African Americans who had sort of fled north for freedom, including um, including Frederick Douglass. Um, so it's a real sort of uh, meditative, hopeful book. Um, and it tells about a very specific time in American history when, um, you know, sort of things were changing in the States and might be very interesting for the history-minded kids in your classroom. Um, another book that I would like to mention is Facts vs. Opinions vs. Robots. And this talks about how you can tell the difference between a fact and an opinion using robots. It also has a really interesting uh, little um, facet to it. it. It also says, you know, sometimes you can't tell if something is fact or opinion until you get enough information. You have to get more information. And then there's a section about um, sort of getting along even if you have different opinions about finding common grounds, about moving forward, and that everyone is entitled to a different opinion, but we still also have to be kind to each other. So um, pretty meaningful in this year in which, you know, kind of all the grown-ups are arguing a lot. So <laughs> very good book. Um, another book I'd like to discuss is, briefly is Saturdays Are for Stella. Um, this is about a little boy who hangs out with his grandma, who he calls Stella, every Saturday. 
and um, they do things together. They eat ice cream sundaes. They make cinnamon rolls together. Uh, Stella takes him out and gets him a toy often when they go and walk around the city. And then one day the little boy gets up and he's ready to go see his Stella and his parents are crying because he can never see his Stella again because she passed away. And he's very sad for quite some time after this happens, but then um, a wonderful thing happens in their family, which helps with the healing and helps him to remember that Saturdays are indeed for Stella. Um, this reminds me a little bit of like Nana upstairs, Nana downstairs, kind of a tearjerker. In fact, I'm welling up a little thinking about it, but it's a really beautiful book about, you know, sort of life transitions and things like that, that might be really helpful for kids that are going through, you know, those tough times in their lives. Saturdays are for Stella. Oh, I forgot to mention it's by Candy Wellens um, and it's cute. Grandmas make everything better. Saturdays are for Stella. Um, another really fun book that has come across my desk is uh, Fliberty Gibbity Words starring a young William Shakespeare. Uh, Will wakes up and there are some words hanging above him and he would like to collect them for his stories and his plays. And um, he has to chase down the words to um, express himself properly. So it's quite fun. Everyone's wearing tights. <laughs> and there are lots of Shakespeare quotes um, wrapped in along the story. So there's the, the, they tell the tale, the story of Will chasing for the words. And they use um, useful Shakespearean quotes to go along with it. Uh, this book is by Donna Guthrie. And it's Liberty Gibbity Words, Young Shakespeare Chases Inspiration. Very cute. It might be a really good way to start a poetry session or something like that to get everybody feeling like they can catch those inspirational words. It also uses a lot of great elevated language. And it also, you know, shows that you have to keep on trying when you're creating art and feeling inspiration. It's not always easy um, to capture the right word. But keep trying and you're going to. You're going to get there. <laughs> um, another book I'd love to mention, and I think that there are a lot of people who have been talking about this, but you got to you gotta mention Cool Cuts. Um, it's a real aspirational book um, about little boys who are born to be awesome. It says it right on the book plate. Um, you know, so it just sort of affirms kids, um, you know, no matter what you look like, you are born to be awesome. It's kind of a feel-good book, and the pictures are just, I, I can't say anything, but that they're delightful. So it's a real easy book to go through um, and just sort of spend five minutes looking at the great pictures and just feeling good about yourself. And finally, I'd love to talk about Mary Wears What She Wants. It's all about a girl in sort of Victorian America. She's, in, she's American. Mary is. And she wakes up one day and she decides that she does not want to wear a dress because she can't bend over. She can't run. It's heavy and hot to breathe in dresses. So one day she just decides that she's going to wear pants. And it is based off of a sort of true story about a person named Mary Edwards Walker. Uh, she was actually from Oswego. So there's a sort of a local connection, a New York State connection at least. Um, she was, she ended up um, graduating medical school. She was a Civil War surgeon. And even when Confederate, the Confederate Army captured her and she was a prisoner of war and they tried to make her wear pants, she refused. And um, whenever um, people asked her why she wore men's clothes, she said, I'm not wearing men's clothes, I'm wearing my clothes. And she was actually one of the only women to ever be awarded the Congressional Medal of Honor. So pretty cool. So I hope that you enjoyed these quick picks. I do have a longer list here um, with about uh, 30 books all together that um, just sort of fill in some really interesting um, spaces in children's lit. Uh, and I hope you have a chance to take a look at the list and find some inspiration for yourself. Um, thanks for listening. Take care.